हॅलो फ्रेंड्स आय एम संपदा कुलकर्णी वेलकम्स यू इन माय चॅनल टेक टॉक्स इन दिस व्हिडिओ सिरीज आय एम एक्सप्लेनिंग यू द कन्सेप्ट ऑफ बबल शॉर्ट वॉट इज बबल शॉर्ट इट्स इंट्रोडक्शन इट्स सॉल्ड एक्झाम्पल्स अँड इट्स अल्गोरिदम विथ ड्राय रन ऑल दिस थिंग्स आय एम गोईंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू इन दिस व्हिडिओ सिरीज बिफोर मुव्हिंग टू द कंटेंट आय वुड लाईक टू रिक्वेस्ट यू टू सबस्क्राईब माय चॅनल टेक टॉक्स and keep the bell ringing now the current video is explaining you the introduction of bubble sort what is bubble sort that i am going to explain you in this video session so let's start with its introduction so all of you must be knowing that bubble sort is a simplest method of sorting it is a very simple one and usually the concept of sorting is started with the bubble sort to know to understand to learn the uh, sorting techniques we start with the bubble sort as this one is the simplest method of sorting it is comparison based algorithm because it compares the elements which are adjacent to each other and accordingly we supposed to sort the elements so as i just said now each pair which are having the adjacent elements that are get compared with each other and after comparison that adjacent elements exchanges or swaps their position if they are not in order or if it is required how they exchanges the position what is swapping that all the things i am going to explain you very soon in this video series and that's why the comparison after the comparison exchange is done between that elements if it is needed it is called as exchange sort algorithm and therefore this bubble sort is based on the swapping technique or the exchange technique and it is the simple one and that's why it is called as exchange sort algorithm so what is swapping swapping of adjacent elements mean what so every time we supposed to compare the elements which are present in adjacent positions so two elements we are going to compare that's why we have said here like a pair each pair of the adjacent element is compared and after comparison what we have to do the elements are swapped if they are not in order so we supposed to first of all decide the order that is if it is ascending order or descending order and accordingly we have to take a decision for example i am showing you like if this is one single pair is there with me and i want to sort this pair in ascending order so what i have to do i have to check or i have to compare both of them as 32 is less than 52 32 should be present before the 52 position so that's why the exchange or the swapping is needed so for that the swapping will be done like this 32 will take the position of 52 and 52 will take a position of 32 and now after swapping the pair the necessary adjustment we have done and now the numbers are written the order they that is order is ascending order now let's see why the bubble is the name given to this particular sorting technique why the name is bubble sort so usually the elements tend to move up into the correct order like bubbles rising to the surface why because the they are having the weight as the lighter weight so the smaller elements which are in the uh, have were the elements which are having the lighter weight they are bubbles up on the surface and that's why this is the technique called as bubble sort so if you must have seen that bubble is having less weight and it takes the position on the surface of the uh, uh, liquid in the same way the bubble the smaller elements usually bubbles up and the 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 elements which are having the higher weight should get set their position at the end or at the bottom so that's why this is the sorting technique name is given bubble sort now let's see what are the advantages and disadvantages of the bubble sort 
so advantages are the first advantage is it is very simple algorithm then only it works on the comparison technique a simple technique we are going to use that is nothing but a single task we have to perform here only the comparison and if needed we have to swap the elements and this makes very small and simple program but what are the disadvantages so the disadvantages are the time requirement that is time complexity of this sorting algorithm is very high because every time it compares the adjacent element and it it uh, uh, takes a decision where to uh, swap them or not to swap them and that's why uh, its time complexity is big o n square and it is highly insufficient or inefficient it is highly inefficient for large data set and that's why it slows down the sorting method and why the bubble sort is not as much as good as of the remaining sorting technique we'll see the reasons one by one the first reason is though it is simple but the time complexity is high that's why it is very slow uh, it gives the less performance if an array is already sorted then also it goes through the comparison and all the passes required for the execution of this bubble sort the third reason is why the bubble sort is not that much good is uh, in all the cases the scenario of the time complexity is big o n square so it's very inefficient technique is the last reason why the bubble sort is not as good as of the rest of the sorting techniques i am explaining you how bubble sort works how will the bubble sort work with the set of values so let's start with first of all the introduction of bubble sort the bubble sort is the simplest method of sorting algorithm basically it is based on the technique of comparison and the comparison is done between the adjacent elements that is the every pair of the adjacent element after the comparison if there is a need to exchange or swap the elements if for any certain order then the swapping or the exchange is to be done and that's why this sorting technique is called as exchange sorting technique so swapping is nothing but the main part of this algorithm and swapping is to be done if the elements adjacent elements are not in said orders so let's see what we have to compare we have to compare the adjacent elements and after comparison we have to take a decision whether to swap the elements or not if they are not in the required order then we have to take a decision of swapping or the exchanging the swapping means the changing their positions that is let's see the example over here the here are two elements or a pair that elements we are going to compare if you want these two numbers in ascending order obviously you will say that 32 must appear before 52 so that's why we are exchanging both of them or swapping both of them by changing their position 32 will take a position of 52 and 52 will take a position of 32 and now after swapping here you can see that they are in a ascending order we'll see the concept of iteration and passes what are the iteration what are the passes because this is again the important concept with respect to any of the sorting technique so with respect to bubble sort or any of the sorting technique what are the iterations so iterations are nothing but the swapping between the pairs while doing comparison if they are required so if required if needed if it is necessary whatever the swapping or exchanging of the position of the elements is to be done between the pair is nothing but the iteration and combinedly the number of iteration forms the passes so what is pass 
so iterative swapping whenever required whatever we have done for all the elements of the array combinedly it forms the passes so in total the passes are nothing but the iterations or the set of iterations where we are going to compare the elements present in every pair and the swapping is done if it is needed this iteration process is done repeatedly for all the elements of the array and at the end of the array we can say that we have done with the pass so the set of iterations form the passes here i am explaining you the same thing that is iteration and passes with few more details that is swapping between pairs while comparison if it is required is nothing but the iteration and the what it does it rearranges the elements in the desired order that is it may be ascending order or it may be a descending order and the set of iteration combinedly forms the passes so what are the passes passes are nothing but the iterative swapping of all the elements of the array and what it does it does or it helps us to form the array in a sorted order that is in either ascending order or in descending order and in case of a bubble sort specifically the passes settles the large elements at end of the every pass and the vice versa that is in descending order it settles the smallest element at the end of every pass and the largest element at the beginning of every uh, beginning of the array so these are nothing but the passes now let's see how the sorting bubble sort actually works and let's keep in mind that i am going to explain you all these things with respect to sorting of the elements in ascending order so what will be my first step so first step is for all the pairs if they are not in order reorder them by swapping that is we have to compare the elements from every pair if they are not in order we have to order them by swapping so this is called as iteration of the current pass this is the iteration and at the end of every iteration the largest element is located at the end of every pair we have seen the example of the number 52 and 32 where after swapping 52 which is the largest element is at the end of the pair now let's see the step step number 2 is with respect to the passes so we have to continue this step number 1 what is step 2 says continue step number 1 till end of the array and this is called as the pass and this will be the end of the pass if you are at the end of the array it is nothing but the end of the pass and at the end of the every pass the largest element is located at the end of the array here the largest element is located at the end of every pair because this was the iteration but this is a pass pass deals with all the elements of your array and that's why if it is bubble sort at the end of every pass the largest element is located at the end of the array and what will be the third step the third step is we have to continue the step number 1 and step number 2 n times if the size of array is n we have to continue all these steps for n number of times if it is having n number of elements so in total n minus 1 number of total passes are required to sort the size of size n of array and at the end you can see that here at the end a list will be in a sorted order that will be in ascending order because this is the steps these are the algorithm for sorting of the elements in ascending order we will see how bubble sort works with the help of example so first of all if you are not knowing about the bubble sort let's overlook the concept of bubble sort it is a very simple method of a sorting it is not at all complex one and it is mainly comparison based algorithm we used to compare the adjacent elements that is nothing but a pair of elements and after comparison we have to take a decision that if both the numbers that we have compared are not into a 
required order we have to rearrange them and that's why the while rearranging we have to perform the exchanging of the numbers that's why this is called as exchange sort we'll see what is the swapping or the exchange of the adjacent elements so whenever the elements from every pair are compared after comparison we have to swap them if they are not in desired order for example if the desired order is ascending order and if the odd numbers are not present in the ascending order then in that case we have to rearrange them and that is called as the swapping of the numbers now let's see how it works so the step number 1 is that we have as we have compared two numbers if they are not in order then we have to swap them this is called as the iteration and in every iteration the largest number is located at the end of every pair because iteration is nothing but the comparison between two numbers which are adjacent to each other now what we will do in the step number 2 in the step number 2 we will continue the step number 1 till end of the array that is one by one every pair is going to be compared and we have to take a proper decision after comparison where to swap whether to swap or not to swap and if you are at the end of the array this is called as the pass or end of the pass and at the end of the every pass the largest element is located at the end of the array and these two steps you have to execute repeatedly till your whole array is in a sorted manner so the total number of passes are required in this comparison or in this algorithm are n minus 1 total number of passes required in this comparison are n minus 1 and at the end you will get the data that will be in a sorted order that may be ascending order or that may be a descending order now let's start with the example solved example so let's see this is unsorted array before applying a bubble sort so here total number of elements that are there in your array that are shown over here they are seven in number now let's start to apply the bubble sort and see this is the pass number one in pass number one in every pass at the number of iterations we have to perform and for that we have to start with the first pair first pair is nothing but the first two elements of your array let's check whether these two numbers are in desired order or not see we are going to perform the bubble sort on the the set of numbers on uh, and that numbers we want to be sorted into the ascending order so let's check whether these two numbers are in ascending order yes they are in ascending order so that's why no swapping is required let's move to the next pair so i'm going to move the window to highlight the next pair here you can see that the two numbers they are 8 and 22 they are not in a sorted order the because the first number is 22 second number is 8 these are not in a sorted order so that's why we'll require a swapping between two these two numbers exchanging of the these two numbers is required so let's perform the swapping of these two numbers and after that your array will look like this array will look like this and here you can see that at the end of the swapping or at the end of this iteration the two numbers are in a sorted way the pair is in a sorted that is in ascending order and among these two the largest number is set at the last position of these two and in this way we have done with this iteration now let's move the window to the next pair that is nothing but 22 and 15 again as it is not in a ascending order this pair these elements are not in ascending order so that's why swapping is required let's swap the numbers and after swapping you can see that 15 which is less than 22 is exchanged 
with 22 and secured the position 15 uh, secured the previous position to 22 now let's move forward for the next pair as these two numbers are in ascending order so no swapping is required let's move to the next pair as these two numbers are not in ascending order so that's why swapping is required let's swap these two numbers and after swapping 28 is occurring at the before position to the 32 let's move forward to the next pair next two adjacent elements again the swapping is required as they are not in ascending order so that's why put 2 to the previous position and 3 to the next position or exchange the position of both of them and at the end we have <coughs> after exchanging the elements we have we can see that the two numbers that is a pair is in ascending order and here you can see that at the end of this pass 1 the number with the highest weight is settled down at the end position and all the numbers which are lighter in weight they are bubbled up to the previous position and this is the beauty and this is the main aim behind the bubble sort and that's why it is named as bubble because all the smallest elements are bubbled up and heavier elements heavier number are settles down now so this is you can see at the end of pass 1 your array is looking like this now let's move forward for pass number 2 for the pass number 2 we'll consider this array in the in the same order whatever we have done in the pass number 1 the same thing we will do over here let's start with the first pair the swapping is required because both the numbers are not in a sorted order let's perform swapping of both the numbers and after that let's move to the next pair so next pair 12 and 15 no swapping is required let's move to the next pair 15 and 22 again no swapping is required let's move to the next pair 22 28 again no swapping is required move to the next pair and my next pair is 28 and 2 here the swapping is required because these two numbers are not in ascending orders let's perform a swapping of these two number exchanging of these two number and after exchanging you can see 28 is settled down to the next position to 2 and at the end of this pass pass number 2 here you can see that 28 was the largest number among the uh, remaining number and has secured the second last position so here you can see that these are the numbers at the end of pass number 2 let's start with the pass number 3 let's start with the first pair no swapping required for the next pair no swapping required for the next pair again no swapping is required but here for the next pair swapping is required let's perform a swapping of these two numbers and after swapping your array is looking like this and here you can see that 22 has secured the third last position and at the end of pass 3 third last number has secured its position let's start with the pass number 4 a first pair no swapping required second pair again no swapping is required and the third pair again swapping is required as 15 and 2 are not in a sorted order let's perform swapping let's perform exchanging the position of these two numbers and your array will look like this and at the end of pass 4 15 has secured the last position now let's see the pass number 5 where the first pair no swapping is required in a second pair swapping is required and now let's swap let's exchange the position of these two numbers and your array will look like this and here you can see that at the end of pass 5 12 also has secured a position and now the last pass that is n minus 1 pass pass number 6 total 7 numbers are there and this is the n minus 1 pass a single pair is remaining let's perform swapping on both the numbers as they are not in order let's perform swapping let's perform the exchanging the position of these two numbers and at the end you here you can see that it also has secured a position and at the end of pass 6 you your array is looking like this and at the end a single element is remaining and that's why the comparison is not possible and hence we will see that 
Now we will include that number into the sorted array and your sorted array will look like this. So after including that number your sorted array is the array where all the numbers are there in ascending order. So after applying a bubble sort your array will look like this. Start with the another sort example. I have already explained one example in the previous video session. Now in this current video session let's start with the another sort example for bubble sort. Before that if you are not knowing the concept of bubble sort let's take a overlook on that. So bubble sort is very simple method which is used for sorting the numbers in either order that is either in ascending or in descending. Mainly it uses the technique of comparison that's why it is called as comparison based algorithm. Usually it compares the adjacent elements or the pair and after that or after every comparison the decision is to be taken. So after comparison if the adjacent elements which are compared are not in a re required order then the exchange or the swapping of those two numbers are to be done in the bubble sort and mainly the concept of exchange we are going to use over here that's why this algorithm is called as exchange sort algorithm. Now let's see what is swapping what is exchanging of the adjacent elements. So while comparing the every pair whatever the adjacent elements are compared after comparison if the elements are not looking in a proper order then we have to swap them that is we have to exchange their positions. This concept in detail I am going to explain you when we will, you will see the solved example. So in short we will see how it works so that that will be easy to all of you to solve the given problem statement the given set of values in ascending order. So first step is for all the pairs we have to compare the elements for all the pairs and if the two elements within that pair are not in order then we have to reorder them. While reordering them we can take the help of swapping concept. This is called as the iteration because the two elements in the array are we are going to compare and if required that we are going to swap and after end of every iteration you can see that the largest element is located at the end of every pair. This was the step number one. In the step number two what we will do? In the step number two we will perform the task that we have done in step number one repeatedly till end of the array and this is called as end of the pass or whatever the steps whatever the iterative steps we are going to perform in step number two are, is nothing but the pass. And at the end of every pass, the largest element of the array is located at the end of the array. And these two steps we have to perform repeatedly n times if the size of array is n. And the total number of passes required for this is nothing but n minus 1. And at the end you will get the whole list in a sorted order that is in ascending order because specifically these steps are designed to sort the array in descending order. Just to perform the same task in descending order you just have to check whether the comparison after the comparison if the pair is not in descending order then you have to rearrange them by swapping. Now let's start with the unsorted array if the five elements are there with us they are not in a sorted array they are not in a sorted order then after applying a bubble sort this is the pass number one and let's start for the comparison so a first pair let's compare whether the swapping is required or not yes the swapping is required because we are performing the bubble sort to sort the elements into the ascending order. So let's swap the exchange their position and now let's compare the next pair. Let's compare 11 and 16. No swapping is required. So 
सो दैट्स वाई कीप देम एज इट इज लेट्स कंपेयर द नेक्स्ट पेयर सिक्सटीन एंड वन येस स्वैपिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड एक्सचेंजिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड सो लेट्स एक्सचेंज द पोजिशन ऑफ द नंबर्स एंड यर एरे विल लुक लाइक दिस लेट्स गो फॉरवर्ड फॉर द नेक्स्ट पेयर द नेक्स्ट पेयर सिक्सटीन एंड थर्टीन येस स्वैपिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड सो लेट्स स्वैप द नंबर्स or exchange their position and your array will look like this and at the end you can see that over here the numbers are in a after end of pass 1 the numbers are looking like the highest number the largest number heaviest number is settled down at the end of the array and all the numbers are bubbled up which are lighter in the weight let's start with the pass number 2 let's consider the same array Let's check the first pair whether the swapping is required to sort them in ascending order. No. Let's move forward for the next comparison. Next pair. Yes, the swapping is required as eleven is greater than one. So let's perform a swapping, exchanging of the position of these two numbers, and after that, you can see over here the one and eleven are swapped. Let's compare the next two numbers. They are eleven and thirteen. no swapping is required and here you can see that the number 13 is settled down to the end of the array let's start with the pass 3 in pass 3 here you can see that previously two numbers are settled down and only the three numbers are remaining for the comparison so the swapping is required as 7 is greater than 1 let's exchange their position let's perform the swapping on these two numbers and your array will look like this next comparison will be between the next pair 7 and 11 no compare no swapping is required so that's why 11 will settle down to the proper position and this will the array at the end of pass 3 so the pass 4 n minus 1 passes are going to be required this is the last pass <laughs> because total five values were there in our array so comparison is done and no swapping is required so that's why at the end of the uh, at the end of this pass you will get all the numbers in a sorted array so at the end after applying a bubble sort your sorted array is like this so here we have done with the sorting in this video session i am explaining you how to develop a logic of a bubble sort and how to start its implementation so before that let's see how it works here i am going to explain you the steps that the they are required to know the working of bubble sort so the step number is as all of us are knowing the bubble sort is a comparison based sorting technique so that's why we are going to compare the elements present in a pair if they are not in order reorder them by performing the swapping between that two numbers what is swapping that i have already explained in my previous videos i hope you have uh, gone through that video and you are knowing the concept of swapping this step is called as iteration that is nothing but the comparison between the elements which are present in a pair and after every iteration you can see that the largest element which is located at the end of every pair you have to perform this task repeatedly in the step number 2 and it is called as the pass end of the pass you will find that the largest element is located at the end of the array and at the end you have to continue both the steps that is step number 1 and step number 2 for n times if the size of array is n and you can see you can observe that the number of total passes required to sort the size or the least of size n are n minus 1 and at the end you will find your least is in a sorted order so now let's start with the implementation of the logic of the bubble sort so very first thing what we have to start with we have to compare to check the order of the consecutive numbers or the elements of the pair 
so for that you are going to use the j as an index and its next consecutive element that's why j plus 1 that we are going to check if a of j is greater than a of j plus 1 that is for example j is 0 then 0th value is greater than the first value of your array and if i want to sort the number in ascending order then we have to perform the swapping between these two numbers if this condition is true let's perform the swapping of the two numbers so for the swapping i am going to take a help of a temporary variable so jth value that i am going to copy into the temporary variable j plus one value that is next value that i am going to copy into the jth position and again the temporary value that i am going to put at the position j plus one so in this way i can perform the swapping of these two number and now what i have to do i have to do all these things for all the rest of values from starting from the position 0 so that's why I am putting a for loop over here that is for all the values they are from j equal to 0 j is less than n minus 1 and this task we have to perform repeatedly this is called as iteration because this is going to help you to compare the elements which are present in a pair and at the end you have to perform this task for all the elements and for all number of elements that are nothing but the passes so that's why for this i am going to use the another index variable that is nothing but i i is less than n because for all n values we have to perform this and i plus plus so this will perform repeatedly for all i is equal to 0 to i is less than n when it is going to become n i is going to become n if it is both numbers are equal it will get exited from the function so in this way we can develop the logic of a bubble sort in this video session i am explaining you the execution of the algorithm which is called as dry run with the help of solved example in the previous video we have seen that how to develop a logic or an algorithm for bubble sort and now the same algorithm we are going to use to execute it to explain it with the help of solved example so here the left half slide is i am going to use to show you the algorithm or the program and the right half slide in which i will show you the dry run with the help of solved example so let's start with the first statement of our algorithm where we are going to start with the first pass for i equal to 0. So let's start with the pass 1 and the first iteration in which we are going to compare the first, first pair of the elements. So let's start with i equal to 0. Then for the next for loop for j equal to 0 let's initialize the j with the value 0 and now let's go forward for the next statement of your algorithm is nothing but the comparison so let's compare the element which is present at jth position and j plus 1 position whether the condition is true yes the condition is true so that's why this is j and j plus 1 and now as if the condition is true what we have to do we have to go forward for the next statement of our slide which is nothing but the swapping of two numbers so for the swapping of two numbers here you can see that i have used a temporary variable so let's take this container as a temporary variable and what you have to do you have to put the jth element into the temporary variable so this temporary variable is now holding the value 22 now let's paste the value of j plus 1 at the jth position so i have pasted it and now the j plus 1 position will hold the value from the temporary variable so now let's update the j plus 1 position so in this way we have done the swapping of the elements of the current pair which is highlighted now with the help of window and after swapping you can see that the number 22 which is higher in a weight is located at the end of the pair so this was the iteration one now let's move forward for 
the next iteration and for the next iteration your i will be as it is that is 0 and now the inner for loop j plus plus will be there here you can see that now j will be pointed at the next position that is nothing but the first position and the next position that i am going to compare is nothing but j plus 1 so let's highlight the window with the help of uh, let's highlight the pair with the help of window and now let's compare both of them whether the condition is true or false yes the condition is true it means that we have to perform the swapping between two numbers why the condition is true because j element is higher in the weight than that of j plus 1 element and as we want to sort these numbers in ascending order these two numbers must get swapped with each other now for the swapping what we have to do again we have to take the help of temporary variable let's copy the j element into the temporary variable let's copy the j plus 1 element at the j position and let's copy the content of a temporary variable at the j plus 1 position and in this way we have done the swapping of these two number in second iteration after this what we have to do again we will go back to perform j plus plus operation in the iteration number 3 so let's perform j plus plus operation let's initialize j to the second position let's initialize j plus 1 to the position 3 let's compare whether 22 and 15 is it needed to perform the swapping by comparing whether 22 is greater than 15 yes it's needed so that's why what we have to do now let's highlight these two elements then perform the swapping of these two number with the help of temporary variable let's copy the j element onto the temporary variable let's copy j plus 1 element onto the j position and the temporary variable at the j plus 1 position and in this way we have done with the swapping and at the end of this iteration you can see the higher element higher weight element is residing at the end position of the pair so now let's move forward for the next iteration iteration 4 by performing j plus plus let's initialize j after that let's compare j and j plus 1 again the swapping is needed as the 22 is greater than 2 so highlight the pair and let's swap the elements with the temporary variable and after swapping the elements from the temporary variable and j and j plus 1 you can see the array will look like this and at the end of the pass 1 here you can see that the greatest number among these numbers is secured the last position and all the numbers which are lighter in weight are bubbled up now let's move forward for the next pass and the iteration so pass number 2 and the iteration 1 for that here let's perform i plus plus and i is incremented by 1 let's start again from Let's initialize j to 0 position let's initialize j let's come and j plus 1 the condition is false so that's why no swapping is needed let's highlight the pair first of all and let's look at the elements which are present in the highlighted pair no swapping is needed so that's why move forward for the for the next iteration let's perform j plus plus and now let's initialize j to 1 and let's compare the elements which are adjacent to each other highlight the pair again as 18 is greater than 15 and we want to sort the numbers in ascending order the swapping is needed so that's why let's highlight the line of code which we are going to execute that is nothing but the swapping let's copy the j element into the temporary variable let's copy j plus 1 element at the j position and let's copy the temporary variable at the j plus 1 position so swapping is done and now let's move forward for the next iteration iteration 3 by performing j plus plus operation as the condition is true let's move forward for the comparison j and j plus 1 and let's highlight the pair here and after highlighting you can see that the 18 
is greater than 2 so that's why swapping is needed so let's highlight the swapping code and let's perform the swapping of these two numbers and after that we let's move forward for the next iteration let's highlight the pair now and after highlighting no need of swapping so that's why at the end of pass 2 you can see over here the 18 is also secured the second last position here you must have seen that we have compared with the 22 as well and this is the disadvantage of this algorithm as though the numbers are in order still we have to perform the comparison between each and every element of the array let's start with the next pass pass number three and the first iteration that's why i is two and j equal to zero let's compare the first pair and the no no swapping is needed so that's why increment in j in the second iteration j is initialized at one let's compare both the elements yes the swapping is needed as 15 is greater than 2 let's perform the swapping of these two numbers with the temporary variable and after swapping you can see over here the elements are looking like this let's move forward for the next iteration let's compare 15 and 18 no swapping is needed because 15 is less than 18 they are already in supposed to ascending order so that's why next iteration j plus plus let's compare 18 and 22 again they are in order so that's why no swapping is needed at the end of pass 3 you can see the three numbers are settled down at the bottom position of the array let's go forward for the last iteration sorry last pass as the five numbers are present so n minus one number of passes are required this will be the last pass and for the iteration one let's initialize j to zero let's compare j and j plus one as the 22 sorry 12 is greater than 2 the swapping is needed let's perform the swapping of these two numbers and after swapping this will look like this let's move forward for the next iteration let's compare these two values as they are in order no swapping is needed let's move forward for the next iteration let's highlight the elements with the window and no swapping is needed as they are already in a sorted way let's move forward for the next iteration let's initialize increment j to the next position and let's compare j to the plus one position highlight the window and here you can see that no swapping is needed so that's why this is at the end of pass 4 you can see the last four numbers had secured their position now the number 2 is remaining for the comparison but as you can see that among 5 4 number has secured the position it indicates that a single number is also in a sorted order so that's why we will require the n minus 1 number of passes if n number of elements are present in your array so in this way the bubble sort algorithm is executed and i have explained you it with the help of example i hope you must have understood all the things so thank you friends for listening and watching this video if you like the video and the content please do not forget to give the comment and do not forget to share it with your friends here i am providing you a shortcut link for the subscription of my channel tech talks along with this the next video of this video series you will find out here as well as the whole video series you can find here with the help of playlist of a bubble sort thank you happy data structuring happy learning thank you